the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. So, the teaching priest now begins to expose you to the various facets of the kingdom life for instance now you begin to learn about the prayer ministry for instance you begin to learn about the power of the word of god in your your living and your excelling that man in this kingdom does not live by bread alone but by, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god is that true you now begin to learn on the economic system of the kingdom that god is a benevolent god is a benevolent king and he desires to prosper you but here is the way you prosper god's way now he begins to teach you your system of defense theologically speaking the entire book of ephesians six chapters it it gives the most balanced theological presentation of the entire journey of the believer chapters one and two begins by helping you understand your union with christ and your positional advantage by reason of being in christ it is there you find how that you have been exalted with christ above thrones dominions and every name that is named so the goal is to help you understand who you are in christ is that true the implication of your being one with christ and then it goes further to teach you how to walk a life that is worthy of your calling then it now lets you know that you are not alone in this system there is an adversary that is determined to thwart the purposes of god in your life if allowed he now begins to teach you that there is in god's economy there is a provision to ward off the hands of darkness he does not leave you in the dark he lets you know that there are cohorts of darkness that are determined to see that your life does not become an expression of the glory of god now please hear me when a believer let me use please one of this my dear brothers any one of you just come let me use this gentleman for an example i like to teach with illustrations thank you please come watch this let's assume with me that this gentleman say he got born again four or five years ago at the end of five years of your christian experience you should be able to defend your growth in god that means i should be able to interview this man and say sir tell me what you know about god and tell me what you know about kingdom living if this man cannot defend his staying in church he's been wasting his time and wasting the time of the pastor are you offended can i continue now this man should be able to tell me what he's learned about prayer if i ask him as a five-year-old believer under a methodical spiritual structure that has been communicating doctrine after doctrine what do you know about prayer most believers the answer will be zero what do you know about giving what do you know about god what do you know about man what do you know about success what do you know about satan what do you know about purpose and your assignment what do you know about destiny what do you know about longevity what do you know about influence what do you know about growth zero this man should be so built that i can refer a new believer to him and never see him again and say follow this man up when you meet a graduate doctor or one who is a consultant you can bring a fresh graduate who is a doctor and literally trust him under the care of that man and know that after three four five years you will meet one who is a a settled and grounded medical practitioner but you do not find this in church 
now imagine that this man respectfully speaking i now say because you have been in church five years i now make you the pastor of another church you see what i've done as confused as he is with respect to my example now look at the things he does not know so if this man is counseling now what is he going to tell the person pastor there are all kinds of demons disturbing me i go to sleep and i see my grandmother calling me and the man said let's pray that's all right because he does not have the spiritual intelligence to deal with that situation are we together now this is the man who is going to train the leaders in that church he will only give them from the lens of his ignorance or his limited knowledge so you should be able to tell me what you know about prayer listen do you know when you encounter the holy spirit and the word of god and you seek to be methodically mentored with 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 precision you can hear people talk and with the precision of a consultant if i would use that expression you can easily diagnose their spiritual problem in a moment if someone comes and tells you look i don't know what is wrong i don't i don't even have passion for the house of god you should be able to know what is the problem like a doctor is listening to a patient and he said look i have my, i'm running temperature i'm throwing up i'm having cold and the man laughs and says okay that's all right he said, doctor you don't understand and the man says i know can you have that level of precision unfortunately now i'm saying this because this is a kingdom life conference imagine this man as a parent the priest of his home with this level of spiritual confusion daddy i went to sleep and someone slapped me i said don't disturb me that boy is already telling you something that you will you will suffer it yourself too daddy i go to bed and it's like someone is calling me and he says don't disturb me the man is not evil he's just not matured are we together mommy somebody laid her hands on my head in school and from that time i've been having a mysterious headache oh it's all right don't worry god will help you where eh? well, go and report to your teacher you see this is the way we i'm showing you that when there is no spiritual growth it spills over to society it now begins to permeate everywhere imagine this man as a ceo now and his company is going down and he cannot interpret things from the lens of a superior belief system light of the world you step down to my darkness open my eyes let me see that's my prayer lord you're the light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see will you open my eyes let me listen listen because of this man's spiritual growth five thousand people who are under his care in his company can rise and enjoy the blessings of god because one person is matured he's not just educated he has spiritual intelligence he can look at a particular staff and know that this staff is not just a poor staff there are powers fighting this one because he's the one god is raising to bring life to his family and one day he will invite him and say come to my office and he thinks you are discussing the issue of containers coming and he says listen i'm not just a ceo there is an anointing upon me i am transformed i know the handwriting of satan there is a lecturer who can look at a student because the lecturer has allowed himself herself to grow you can look at a student and know that this student is not dull the parents may be ignorant but this boy is that the devil is fighting the person come to my office this is not just about repeating this is not about starting again i know what is wrong with you my maturity has diagnosed your situation
tell you this when we refuse to grow everybody connected to us suffers the consequences of our spiritual stuntedness the implication is that it does not affect you alone because everybody who is under your care must become a victim of your limitation imagine how many innocent people's destinies have been trapped because of the absence of growth of leaders absence of growth of pastors absence of growth of parents absence of growth of businessmen when you encounter jesus it does not stop there you need transformation now you begin to learn the ways of god for instance the bible says listen very carefully the bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholded more than his meat and it tends to poverty now you come from a family where nobody has risen if you came from a poor family don't bring a poor family out of you if you come from a defeated family don't bring a defeated family out of you become that bridge between the old and the new you make up your mind like jesus that i will surrender my life for the sake of those coming ahead is god speaking to someone transformation is a long process because now you begin to learn you are learning the principles of the kingdom listening to tapes do you know transformation is not all up to god it takes discipline to be transformed this is why we need to cast the spirit of laziness from the house of god waiting for the word of god to come and meet you is proof that you are not serious spiritually by the truth it says the market does not come to your house by the truth you wake up in the night lord i thank you i came from a poor family i came from a defeated family i came from a family of idol worship lord this has to end i cannot watch my children i'm not going to be able to give my children an explanation as to why they're inheriting defeat in spite of their education lord let me pay that price even if it means using me as a scapegoat let me go through that once and for all and the spirit of the lord comes to you in response to your hunger call on to me he says and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things that you do not know please hear me an attack on your prayer life an attack on your passion to study the bible is not about westernization is danger being programmed in your future can i tell you this the devil will not attack you immediately he's not stupid he will wait for you to keep going down in ignorance and then destroy all your children anybody who can help you the devil will take them away from you first before he attacks you because if you have helpers too close to you when you attack you can call on them and they will help you so the devil will allow you to be far from everywhere help can be found then one day he will visit you in a way that you cannot imagine someone shout no way shout it again If our God is for us, then what could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, and if our God is for us, then what could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, can I tell you this? Satan is many things. But a fool is not one of them i repeat satan is many things whatever else you call satan you are right but to call him a fool you will spend your life learning that lesson that is not that foolish satan has an advantage of age he has been around for a very long time the bible says to not be ignorant of the devices when it talks about weapons it says they are fashioned no weapon fashion they don't just come to fashion means he studies you he studies your vulnerability that anger that becomes the entrance point he knows that when you are broke you are not a christian again 
so he will ensure that everything that can give you joy financially goes away so that in that state of pain and frustration here he comes are you seeing that your anger with your pastor is not just about your pastor it is the devil knowing that there is a message that should be preached in march that your spiritual life depends on he wants to make sure you do not hear that truth so he will use an occasion maybe in your unit or whatever it is an offense and anger you say this church self the way they are and you miss out on an opportunity and start recycling years of pain in your life again is god helping us tonight Are you seeing the reason why you have to pray for your pastor because if the devil attacks him with affliction it's not just about the man he's attacking you it's not him he knows that if this man is not in the best of health it has a way of disturbing his focus imagine a man of God who stands on the stage and there's a school fees of 3.5 hanging on him with text messages entering his phone while he's preaching the devil will ensure that his eyes will see one of those text messages as he's quickly turning his points please be reminded that tomorrow by this time if you have not paid your school fees and you see the man scattered on stage you hear anything again he's shouting and you are wondering why he's angry what changed you invited me to come and preach Are we together the journey of transformation is a real journey can i tell you you get to a point where you are matured indeed you know what to do the moment you see the writings on the wall your boss looks at you and says i don't know what is it about you but i i am beginning to hate you you are a matured believer you know that is not your boss because we wrestle not against flesh and blood you now go back as a matured believer you know what to do you know the power of prayer you can go and shut your house and from that central control room you know how to begin to control things by the next morning the man is calling you and say what did you even say your name is again you know what you have done listen please sit down Please take seriously what I'm teaching you. Politicians, unbelievers, they understand this. You reject them and insult them and say, I will not vote them. They don't come to you. They leave you. They know what they need to do. While you are sleeping, they are programming something upon your mind. And to your shock and amazement, you will do things you vowed that you would not do. And they will stand laughing at you and laughing at your lack of growth. As a father when you are matured you come to your house and you find out your wife is sick mysteriously your children are sick mysteriously some business that you put just crashed no this is not just about lack of good decision making skills there is an adversary coming within my space you remove that regalia of being a father and wear your priestly regalia you tell your wife i'm coming while they are sleeping in the night they are hearing the voice of a priest indeed walking around your domain sanitizing that atmosphere because you know what to do listen do you know how proud your children will be as a father sleeping and hearing the voice of a priest indeed you are praying and declaring and as i would always say i said this many years ago you walk to their rooms room by room as they wake up say no 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 just lie down i'm your father let me show you how a priest behaves that boy goes back to school the next day and a missing script of three years is found the day you are not around he will do what you always do that's how to mentor that's how to train don't forget what we are discussing tonight spiritual maturity you are mature to the degree to which you are transformed sustaining superior beliefs that are what compliant hmm. hallelujah 
have a few minutes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless you. Let me give you four biblical indices to measure spiritual maturity very quickly and then we will pray. Ah, someone's spirit is fired up tonight. Someone, you will leave this church and go back home in a hurry this night and shut your door and say, Satan, it was a mistake to have allowed me to come for service because with what I have heard, Hallelujah. Are you ready? There are four biblical indices to measure spiritual maturity. So we can all use this against our lives right here, right now to ascertain the levels of our spiritual maturity. Are you ready? Number one, the first measure of spiritual maturity is conformity to the image of Christ experiential conformity you may want to write that experiential conformity to the image and the character of Christ experiential conformity to the image and the character of Christ that is the first index to measure your maturity The Bible talks in Galatians chapter 5 when you read verse 22 and 23 it talks of the fruit of the spirit or the fruit of the recreated human spirit and now it begins to list them Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22 and 23 just write it for reference sake and it talks about love talks about joy talks about peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith Verse 23 talks about meekness, temperance. It says, against such, there is no law. That means I know you are attaining maturity in the spirit to the degree to which I see an experiential conformity to the image and the likeness of Christ. I will always say it this way. Listen, please. When people look at you as a matured believer, they should even be confused as to where you come from territorially speaking they shouldn't look at you and say you are behaving like them where are you from uh -huh, i said it uh -huh. there should be such level of conformity that it becomes difficult for people to trace you to any place especially the limitations that come with that territory are we together maturity Write for reference, say Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15. We're not reading it, just write it. It tells us things to put off and things to put on like a cloth. Put off all of this and then put on all of this. Experiential conformity to the image and the character of Christ. That is the first proof. That means you can know that an individual is attaining maturity when you begin to see Christ-likeness being formed in him. My little children, he said, of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. In 2 Peter chapter 1, from verse 5 to 7, just two verses, 2 Peter chapter 1, from verse 5 to 7, if it's not projected, just write it. Let's rush for sake of time. Okay, I see it here. It says, and beside this, giving all diligence. Look at this. It says, add to your faith virtue. Virtue, moral excellence. Add to virtue, knowledge. Verse 6 now. And to knowledge, add self-control or temperance. And to temperance, add patience. And to patience, add godliness. Uh-huh. Verse 7. And to godliness add brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness add charity this is growth thank you for the one you have but add this to it thank God for the one you have now but add this to it thank God for the one you have now but add. when you stop adding you are not growing so you grow by adding one of the ways you grow is by adding spiritual qualities to what you currently have last year you had this but you've not added this to it now the lord is saying well done for 2021 but in addition to that which you have 
add this by next year when you'll be celebrating what you've added this year listen write it down we grow by adding we add virtue to virtue truth to truth we grow by adding spiritual quality to spiritual quality number two very quickly the second biblical index for measuring maturity is your depth of knowledge and understanding of the principles of the kingdom your depth of knowledge and your depth of understanding of the principles of the kingdom the bible says in first corinthians 14 and verse 20 i hope i'm right on that please just write it for reference your depth of knowledge of the an understanding of the principles of the kingdom first corinthians 14 20 it says do not be children in understanding i think that's the scripture do not be children in understanding first corinthians 14 and 20 are we together media okay just write this you, you can look it up when you get home and then second peter chapter 1 i'll begin my reading from verse 2 second peter chapter 1 and verse 2 it says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of god and of our lord jesus christ apostle paul apostle peter now he's speaking verse 3 he says according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge through the knowledge the degree to which you know is the degree to which you are matured the difference between a child and an adult is largely knowledge not just the biological differences but principally knowledge Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 the Bible speaking about Jesus said and Jesus increased in wisdom he increased in stature and he increased in favor with God and with men Jesus so number one your experiential conformity to the image and the character of the Christ number two your depth of knowledge and understanding the principles of the kingdom number three ready the third index for measuring maturity in this kingdom is the degree to which the power and the ability of God is at work in your life the degree to which the power and the ability of the spirit is at work in your life the degree to which the power and the ability of the spirit is at work in your life micah 3 8 micah chapter 3 and verse 8 micah chapter 3 and verse 8 i'd like you to read the first sentence if you can see it projected ready okay i'm not sure many people have that access but then i'll read it from here it says but truly okay you can see but truly i am full of power by the spirit of the lord you just stop there truly you can claim to be full of power but you can truly be full of power by the spirit of the lord can i tell you this spiritual power is not for men of god alone spiritual power is not just for preachers and crusade evangelists and apostles and prophets no no spiritual power is for all who are in the fold the bible says as many as believed him even to them that as many as received him to them that believed upon his name he gave them power acts chapter 1 and verse 8 but you shall receive power power is received meaning it can be rejected and many have sadly rejected it there's no time to discuss why we need spiritual power but let me show you very quickly what is the proof that you have power in this kingdom Genesis chapter 1 Genesis chapter 1 I'll begin my reading from verse 2 it ends at verse 4 Genesis 1 watch spiritual power in motion if this is not captured in your life 
you do not have spiritual power ready and the earth was without form and void the hebrew word tohu wa bohu darkness and confusion and darkness was upon the face of the deep the bible says and the spirit of the lord hovered or moved upon the face of the waters please read verse 3 with me if you are a child of god ready one to read and god said let there be light and there was light stop keep that scripture there this is the hallmark the zenith of spiritual power when you say it and it becomes you have power not just falling down not just speaking god here is giving us a template of his idea of spiritual power and god said whatever he said is not the issue the fact that he said and the bible says there was when you say and it becomes you have power and god said and there was and god said and there was litmus test verse 4 same genesis 1 verse 4 and god saw the light and that it was good so please look up four things must be captured for it to be said you have spiritual power number one words number two manifestation number three you must experience it number four it must be good if these things if it is spiritual power what you say that happens must be good if it is not good it did not come from god because my bible says every good gift and every perfect gift comes from where above so you don't just think it's the sky it said from the father of light in whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning and god saw the light please look up the last time you declared my life changed did it change did you see it was it good this is when you know you are a blessing both to yourself and to others listen do you know why we speak over people because we are given the spiritual power that is resident within us an opportunity to reproduce this if it is power you say it it happens and it happens in a way you must see it so it does not just hang in the realm of the spirit the word became flesh the bible says and we beheld the prosperity became flesh the increase became flesh the advancement became flesh he saw that it was good when you read there's no time for us to turn there but when you read the story of the centurion especially matthew's synoptic account the bible tells us about a man who was a centurion that would be the rank of the captain in the army and that he came to jesus beckoning on him to come and address the issue of his sick child is that true and then the bible says jesus respecting him and showing honor he said don't worry i'm coming to your house the centurion now makes a revelation that even jesus passed a comment about it he said no you do not need to come there is something i understand i am a man under authority having servants over me i say to one go and he goes i say to another come and he comes therefore you jesus i know there is an authority that backs you speak the word only and jesus said who taught you i've not found this faith this constructs this understanding who taught you that words create possibilities in this kingdom so i can be here and i can send a word and the bible says if you say it and it becomes and you see it and it is good it was the power of god that produced it you can use this four litmus test to judge there are people who say it and it happens but it is not good something is wrong with the power that sponsored that result if it is the power of god it does not happen arbitrarily it happens at the instance of words 
number two it manifests number three you see it number four it is good the ability to say and see is the hallmark of spiritual power to wrap up on this point let's go to genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 i'll plead that we all read it together we're almost done genesis 21 1 and 2 please help us media please look up everyone we're reading one and two together ready let's read and the lord visited sarah hold on hold on hold on you see the protocol again the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did unto sarah as he has god only does what he says he does not do what you want he only does what you want that is consistent with what he said so the way to make god move in your life is to find what he has said not find what you want god you are watching me that's not a wise prayer you will never receive answer from that kind of prayer present your cause he said bring forth your strong reason this is the judge of the universe the monarch of the universe that sits upon the throne and he says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne hmm. the secret to committing god is finding what he has said that is written this is why it is important you now see that many of us pray all kinds of prayers and don't get results because the prayers are inconsistent with what god has said as mighty as god is he's only limited to what he says and the lord visited joshua selman as he has said it is my responsibility to find what he said about me and bring it to this just god and say father you have said gentiles will come to my light and kings to the brightness of my rising you have said my path is as a shining light that it shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day don't you think this is some baby elementary thing this is what separates people that's why many believers do not receive testimonies in their lives their christian experience is one one episode of pain and shame and disappointment after another your assignment is to take words and bring before him lord you said this that i will not give birth for sorrow this my child that is not looking like what you have said i leave you with the integrity of what you said and god said who can stand against me do you believe that he told joshua no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life and when an angel appeared to joshua joshua removed his sword and he was going to kill the angel who are you and the angel had to say no 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 no. i come as the captain of the lord's army do you know why because joshua said the one who spoke to me told me there's nobody who will be able to stand against me ah. hear me believers what has god spoken to you through your man of god you've thrown it on the ground tonight is time to pick it back Lord you said it that all my 10 years of crying from 2010 you said this is the year you are wiping my tears I hold on to your word and God says now that you believe me get out of the way let me show you that I am Alpha Omega let me show you I am beginning and end can I tell you this I submit to you by the message of God and I believe that this is the same testimony with your man of God and all the people here I have seen God move in my life in ways you cannot imagine from the simple faith like manifestation of bringing before him what he said I love children I really love children I don't know what adults I don't I love them too but I really love children praise the name of the Lord I love everybody I love everybody but children and sometimes I find myself guilty of just making promises sometimes I was not thinking I just tell them look I'll buy you banana I'll buy you this and they look forward to seeing me the moment they see me they just hold me and with confidence the first thing they say is daddy you know that's an implicating statement 
when a child calls you daddy it means every other thing you don't do makes you feel stupid because the proof of fatherhood is the ability to easily give if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children so a stingy man is not a father comes from the word abba source sustainer protector defender so they come and hold me sometimes i didn't make any promise they just say i'm hungry and they mention something that is very serious whatever their eyes can see within that vicinity you just know you're in trouble pray that whatever they mention is something you have money for they don't fear saying anything they can point to a car or a truck and tell you they want it is there is there they are they are declaring the confidence they have on you are we together and so when they tell me those things i am happy and then i tell them okay you go and get it or i will get it for you and they will trouble any adult within them and say has it not arrived can i tell you this learn to put pressure on god's integrity not by complaining and shouting and rambling and say god are you blind you are you are from heaven and you are seeing how nigeria is that's not prayer that's lamentation you see most of the things we do in the secret place is not prayer god only answers prayer he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities but is only moved by his word to be touched and to be moved are two different things if it is action you want from god it is his word you bring to him are we learning tonight dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny. Salas kade bashka na kata branda kete katos. Kete branda kata pakotos koto breke teke ne kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.